What do you need to know before getting an electric vehicle charging point installed at your flat or apartment block? That's the topic of today's video. Very important because as new grant funding rolls out from April 1st, funding is available, but the installs are not often as simple as you might think. So today we're gonna to talk you through everything you need to know about how to get an electric vehicle charging point installed at your flat or apartment block. We're gonna use this building behind us as a case study. We're here today quoting for a customer who wants four charging points installed for their apartment block for four apartments, four dedicated parking spaces. So I hope this video will be of benefit and interesting for you. If it is, it really helps if you smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel because we do post loads of videos all about electric vehicle charging and the life of an electrician. If you do enjoy this video and you think somebody else might benefit from it, why not share it out with somebody else too? Without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing you need to decide is where do you want the electric vehicle charging points to be installed. In this situation we have four dedicated parking bays, one for each of the four flats in this block and the customer knows exactly where they want the charging points to be. There are a few complicated things involved here when it comes to ownership of the land. So the parking bays behind me, these three, are owned by this particular block of flats. The other parking bay is just behind you, I'll show you that there. But this tarmac here that I'm standing on is actually owned by somebody else. So they can't touch this tarmac. And when it comes to cable runs, we have to think about that. But in terms of the charging points themselves, we're gonna be installing them on the wall behind each parking bay. So we have this nice solid brick wall that we can fix to. One, parking, one charging point here, another one here for this parking space. And this parking space has a little bit of brick wall that we can use too. So that's three charging points here. And then the other parking space is just over there where we see that red Mazda. So for that one, we're gonna to have to think a little bit outside the box. So because the customer parks their car this way, the easiest and closest place would just be to put it on the wall here. Now we could mount it on a pedestal, which would probably be nicer, but that's gonna add a significant amount of cost to put a concrete base in and a pedestal. And they are on a bit of a budget on this project. So what we're gonna try and do is just mount it on the wall here and just make sure that they keep the bushes neatly trimmed so that the bushes don't overgrow and, and disable access to the charging point. So that's our four locations. Now we need to know where is the power. Let me show you. So there are two options for power when it comes to running charging points from a block of flats like this. Option one is the landlord's supply and that's in here. So this is what we call the main intake cupboard. It's where the main supply cable comes in from the distribution network operator who owns all the supply cables. That's this big box here. Out of this box, the feed cables come in for the individual flats. So you've got four supplies for the four flats, and then you've got a landlord supply, which is like a communal supply, which runs all the communal areas of the building. Usually that electricity supply is paid for by the management company because obviously it's shared between the four flats. So what I first want to check is, is there enough capacity on the landlord's supply to install all four charging points off of that? Or should we look at installing the four charging points off the four separate flat supplies? Now in terms of the main fuse sizes, that's something that you need to check. What is the supply capacity? Here, we actually have what's called these red, red heads. There's a 100 amp, usually a 100 amp fuse in these and they're gray, but in blocks of flats, they are these red things. And it's basically like a copper link inside. There's no actual fuse because the fuse protection is taken care of with these switch fuses up the top here. So this is the landlord supply. We'll look at this first. You've got the fuse carrier, the landlord's meter, the main isolator switch for the landlord supply, and then these tails which go into the landlord supply consumer unit. And in here you can see we have various circuits, a main switch, two RCDs, and we have some spares here. So there are actually enough spare ways that we could run four charging points off of this landlord supply, which is probably just on a 100 amp limit to this whole supply. The issue with that is that if you install four seven kilowatt chargers, that's gonna be four times 32 amps. That's 
nearly 130 amps of power, 128 amps of power that would be consumed at any one time if you were running all four charging points off of this one landlord supply. And you could risk blowing the main fuse for the landlord supply. So unless we installed 3.6 kilowatt charging points, which are not fast as what most people would like, it's kind of not really an option to run off the landlord supply without installing some kind of active load management, load balancing system, which tends to complicate things. And then you've got the issue of who pays for the electricity for what, because if it's all off the landlord supply, the management company will pay for the electricity for that, which means that then you've got to figure out who used what in terms of each individual charging point. And then you need some kind of back office billing system to be able to bill the residents back for that power. Now that is a great scenario in certain situations where there are bigger blocks of flats or where the landlord supply is a lot closer than the individual consumer units for the individual flats. But in this particular case, I don't think the landlord supply is really a good option because they do want seven kilowatt charging capabilities for every single parking space. So we'll write that off the list for the moment and we'll look at the individual flat supplies and see what the situation is there. So this is the main feed that goes up to the apartment block consumer unit. It's what we call a switch fuse. The reason is it's got a switch here and it's got a fuse here. And what we're gonna do is just pull out this main fuse and see what size that is so that we know what the maximum supply capacity is for the particular flat. So in here we can see we've got an 80 amp fuse. So that is the limit of power supply that's going up to that flat consumer unit is 80 amps, which we'll bear in mind when we're doing the calculations for the loading. So now we're gonna look at the consumer unit in the actual flat itself. So we're up here in the first floor flat. And we're gonna just take the cover off the consumer unit and have a look inside, but we're also gonna see if there are any spare ways here, which is really important. So this is a check that any flat or homeowner can do, is just to look in the consumer unit and see if there are any of these blanks. These are spare ways, which means that you've got space to add an additional circuit, which could potentially be used for an electric vehicle charging point. The other thing you need to check is this label. Normally when the flat is built, it would have been inspected and that has the original inspection date of 2015. The recommended next date of inspection is 2025. So if your next inspection date is out of date, you are overdue for an electrical inspection and that's important to have that done and kept on top of. It's like an MOT for your electrics in your apartment essentially. So we've got spare ways here and we're gonna just take the cover off, which is only qualified electricians should do this. I'm gonna just take the cover off and have a look to see what the condition is like inside. This is what I find soul destroying about new build properties is that they're supposed to be down to a high standard, but I've very rarely found new builds to have been wired to a high standard. And this is a classic example. So you've got this, these wires, whoever installed them originally cut them too short. So they've had to put crimp connections and extend them across, which is just ridiculous. Um, you know, having to put a joint in a brand new cable, which adds potential weakness and adds resistance. Such a shame when it's a brand new install, which has not had anything added to it since it was first built. Um, but it's just a classic experience that we have often with new build properties where unfortunately they're not installed to the highest standards. But inside here, okay, is a little bit of a bodge, but it's not like, you know, it's not gonna burn down or anything. And in terms of space, we do have enough space to run in a new cable. We've got a void in the back here, um, in this stud wall where we could run a new cable down from the loft space above. So we've got spare ways. We would need to change one of these RCDs to a type A RCD, because at the moment they're only type AC RCDs. They don't comply with the regulations for installing an EV charging point. Another thing we'd have to think about is installing a surge protection device to protect the sensitive electronics that are involved in an electric vehicle and an electric vehicle charging point. We could either do that in the consumer unit here or down at the meter position. But what we need to do really now is figure out, okay, we can run a charging point off here, but how do we get the cable from here out to the parking space? So we'll have a look in the loft and see if there's a possibility to run the cables up through there. I check the connections, just make sure there's no loose connections while I've got the 
the board open it's just a nice little safety check so there's a nice clear loft which is good and as you can see the consumer unit's here the loft hatch is up here and the outside wall that we need to get out to is here where the parking space is so we can run the cable through the loft drill out to the outside wall and clip the cable down the outside wall and then we've just got to figure out a route from there to get around to the charging points. So we're outside now and up there is the flat that we were talking about. So the loft space where that drain pipe comes down, which is actually a fake drain pipe, I think another classic new build, they probably installed it in the wrong place and then they decided to just leave it and put a new one in there. But anyway, that's by the by. Essentially, we can run our cable out and down this wall here and then we'll probably have to crawl behind the bushes, which we love as electricians, and then down along this wall here. And then we'll need to protect the cable in some way to come around here. And then again, protect the cable, tuck it in the corner here all the way along. Down it, maybe in that gravel or run it surface clipped along the wall and then up to each of the charging points. The flat upstairs has the space where my vehicle is parked at the moment. So the charging point for that one will go there. So it's a fairly long cable run, but it is doable. And that's a lot better than we can say in some situations where it's almost impossible to do these kind of installs. So that's that flat up there. Now we need to figure out, okay, can we do kind of copy paste for the other flats? or is it a little bit different in the other flats? Let's talk about that inside. So this is the flat that we've just been talking about. There's another flat on this side of the corridor and the consumer unit for that is almost mirror image. So that's great. It's just inside the front door like we found at that flat. But where we want to get out with our cables, we want to get out this side of the front door because we don't want to have cables crossing the front door outside. So what I'm thinking is to run a cable from that consumer unit up into the loft of that flat, drill through into the communal loft here, then drill through into the loft of this flat and then run that cable along with the cable of this flat so that those two cables are running together. I think that's going to be the simplest way to do it. It's not that simple, but it's kind of the neatest way to run all the cables together rather than having four separate cable routes. But the other two downstairs are even more complicated. So let's talk about that downstairs. So now we're downstairs and in this flat, the consumer unit is pretty close to the corridor. It's just the other side of this wall. So that's a fairly easy run through into this corridor. But obviously there's no loft space above. So how do we get a cable from here to outside? Well, we could run up and into the loft and follow the same route as the others using this cupboard here. Because there is a riser that goes up above this cupboard in the next floor all the way up into the loft. So we've got a possible route here. Again, a little bit complicated, but possible. Now this is the riser cupboard. And as you can see down there, we've got a cable tray which goes down into the cupboard below, which has got space to actually be able to run a cable on all the way up and then into the loft space above here and just follow that same route as the other two flats from upstairs. So that's doable, not too complicated. But the flat downstairs to the left of me, they put the consumer unit in a completely different place to all the fl other flats. So we're gonna have to rethink that one. So this flat here, rather than having a consumer unit just by the door, it's completely on the other side of the flat. It's kind of in the living room area. And I'll show you what that means for us with our cable run when we look outside. So with this flat, the consumer unit fuse box is in the living room there. And it is a straight run through to this window here. We can run the cable in trunking in the corner of the house and then basically drill out of the wall, run the cable down the wall and along and put the charging point up there in the corner. So although it's not the same as the others, it is doable in order to get to this parking space here. So let's talk about what grant funding is available because there are various options now with the new grant scheme that's come into place. As an owner of a flat, you still qualify for what was the electric vehicle home charging scheme grant of £350 per charging point to be able to get a charging point installed for your flat. 
So there's that option, which if we did this install on an individual basis, flat by flat, that's probably the route that we will go down. The other option is there is a wider grant available for management companies to be able to install multiple charging points in their car park spaces. That would have been ideal for this situation, except that they need you to provision a minimum of five spaces. And unfortunately, we only have four spaces here, so that's not really gonna work. The advantage of that grant is that it actually covers up to 850 pounds per charging point, rather than the 350 that you get on an individual basis. So that would have been better because we would have had more funding available, but unfortunately this installation doesn't qualify. However, if you do have a management company that owns a car park for an apartment block of five or more spaces, you could potentially qualify for that grant, which is quite interesting. You can also get a slightly lower grant for just provisioning the spaces with charging points but not actually installing the points so that includes installing all the cabling putting kind of dummy charging points in place but not actually putting fully functioning charging points in place and the grant that's available is 500 pounds per parking bay so in the minimum scenario where you just do five you can install four dummy charging points so points which are provisioned for future you need to install at least one active charging point so four dummy and one active and you would get 850 pounds for the active one and 500 pounds for each of the dummy ones so that would be 2850 pounds of grant funding that you would get towards provisioning those five parking spaces and that can scale up to pretty much as many as you want depending on the size of the car park there is a limit i think of 30000 pounds per building of funding but that's a fair chunk towards getting an installation done, which is quite nice. Now there is a third grant funding option in this particular installation because one of the flat owners actually rents out his flat on Airbnb. And that means he qualifies for the workplace charging scheme grant for owners of small uh, accommodation and charities where he could get 350 pounds towards his charging point from the workplace charging scheme grant rather than the home charging scheme. Same amount of money, but just a slightly different way of doing it. And the grant for the workplace is usually slightly easier to claim from a paperwork side of things than the grant for the home charging. So something to bear in mind. And there's another factor involved here, which is that one of the flats is rented out to a private tenant. So the landlord doesn't actually live in the flat, but again, that does qualify for the home charging scheme grant because it does cover people who are renting flats as well as people who own and live in flats. It covers both sides from the landlord side and from the tenant side. So if you're renting or you're owning a flat, you still do qualify for this particular grant. So if we were gonna come off the landlord supply, we need to think about how do we charge each individual apartment owner for their usage. If the management company racks up thousands of pounds of electricity bill, obviously there's gonna be the question of who pays for it. And the tenant that, or, or the flat owner that doesn't have an electric vehicle, is not gonna to wanna to foot the bill for the electricity of the person who does have an electric vehicle and drives hundreds of miles every single week. That's not fair. So what we would do in this particular scenario is install what we call a back office payment system. And that means we have to be selective of what type of charging points we install. Some of them have this option for back office payment system where you can have an RFID tag, you can tag into the charging point so it knows who's using that charging point for that particular charging session. And then the back office payment system, which we can manage on behalf of our client, will tell us exactly how much each person has used in terms of electricity and then that can be billed back to them as an invoice which then they can pay to cover the costs of their electricity and you can even include a little bit of a surcharge to help to cover the installation cost over a certain number of years that could be calculated for example or that the management company can make a little bit of a profit to cover, cover other expenses so there's lots of different ways of doing it but you need to have that back office payment system in place unless you want the management company to just cover the electricity costs for everyone, which is highly unlikely. So a very important check that we need to do 
to ensure that it is feasible to install an electric vehicle charging point from the flat consumer unit is to actually do a maximum demand calculation where we work out how much spare capacity the flat has for adding additional loads. To do that, we simply look at the consumer unit and we count up the various circuits that they've got and work out roughly what kind of power might be consumed. So the cooker is on a 32 amp circuit that could potentially use up to 32 amps. The sockets and lights are not gonna to tend to take that much. They've got um, gas central heating in here, so they're not relying on electricity to do any heating of their hot water or their radiators. So that's something we need to consider. Um, water heater, that's just a backup basically for the boiler. So that's not gonna be used on a regular basis and, and lighting, which takes very minimal. So I'd say the maximum demand here at the moment is probably only about 30 to 40 amps on a realistic basis. But if we found that they had, for example, electric showers or a hot tub, or they had air conditioning units that can quickly rack up the maximum demand. And what we need to remember is that this whole consumer unit is running on an 80 amp fuse. So that is the maximum capacity that they've got to be able to take power from the grid. So if we say that the max demand at the moment is 40 amps, if we add a 32 amp load, that takes us up to about 72 amps. We're still within the size of the main fuse in terms of maximum demand, which means it's okay to install a charging point. If we said that uh, the max demand is already 60 or 70 amps here, we can't add an additional 32 amp load because we would risk blowing that main fuse and they'd lose all the electricity in their flat. So then we'd need to think about getting the supply upgraded, contacting their distribution network operator, which is UK Power Networks in this particular area, and asking them to upgrade that to a 100 amp main fuse maybe. So again, lots of things that we need to consider before we know whether we can install a charging point or not. Customer is one of our YouTube subscribers, as you can tell, he knows the treats that we're susceptible to. So um, very kind and generous customers we have, very grateful but I'm not gonna be able to eat all these myself, so I think I'm gonna to have to take these back to the office for Corey. So there are a few final points to, to consider before we go home. One of them is that the customer has very cleverly and kindly got all of the residents together to agree that they all want a charging point to be installed. If he was to do one individual install by itself, it would cost significantly more than the combined individual cost of getting them all done at once. Because obviously, if you're running in all the cables together and stuff like that, labor-wise, it's gonna be less, there's gonna be less traveling time and all that involved in doing them all four in one go. So that's really great that the customers managed to get all four occupants kind of on board with that. It could be a bit more tricky if you're on a larger scale building, but definitely something to consider if you can get a group of people to agree to doing an install, then you'll definitely reduce the overall cost per person having them all done at once. Another thing to consider here is that not everyone qualifies for the grant. And the reason for that is that they don't have electric vehicles on order yet and you do need to have an EV on order or already have an EV in pres present in order to claim this new version of the home charging grant. The customer who owns the Airbnb if he's registered with company's house or he has a VAT number, he can claim the grant under the workplace charging scheme, so he'll get the grant. But the other residents, unless they have a vehicle on order, they won't be able to claim the grant at this point in time, unfortunately, because of the fact that they've got less than five spaces, potentially. So now that we've gathered all the information, final important decision is what charging points are we going to install? And one factor to consider with that is do you have good Wi-Fi signal where the charging points are going to be? Because they're remote from the actual apartments, some of them are maybe up to 20 meters or more from the router, Wi-Fi signal could be an issue. So that means we've got to either install a hardwired data connection, which starts to overcomplicate things, or we can install charging points that have 4G capability built in. So for that reason, at this particular project, I'm gonna to recommend to install the Easy chargers. The other benefit of the Easy, apart from them having 4G connectivity, is that they have that back office payment system capability, which means for the owner who rents his house, his flat as an Airbnb, 
he can give them an RFID tag and he can bill them for their usage during their stay or he can just give an RFID tag as part of the rental and say it's an extra £10 a night if you want to have an electric vehicle charging point installed. Also for security purposes, all of the charging points being able to have RFID tags to secure them. As this parking space is open to the public, anyone could come and rock up and charge up their vehicle, which you don't always want. So having those RFID tags is a good option in this particular situation. They also have lots of safety features built in that we need in this particular scenario. So for that reason, I'm gonna recommend the easy chargers here. So that's it, hopefully I've covered everything, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below in the comments and check out the video up here, which is one of our eight at eight series where we go into a bit of a deep dive about the new updates to the grant scheme. That's a studio video that you might find interesting. Now we are electric vehicle charging experts and we try to help as many people as we can to get EV chargers installed at their properties. So if you would like a quote, if you're in our Cambridgeshire area, please feel free to get in touch using the contact form on our website or just give us a call. But either way, I hope you have found this video of benefit, of interest. If you have, don't forget to press the, the like button. It's just a simple tap, but it really helps us to see that you've enjoyed this video and can motivate us to make more videos like it. Subscribe if you haven't done so already because we show the full install process across our channel so you can see exactly what's involved. And maybe we'll be back here doing an install in a few months. If we do, I'm sure you'd like to tune in and see that installation. But either way, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Thank you.